talking about the Learning Assistant program at FGCU and some of the um, progress that we've been making on on assessing it, trying to figure out how it's doing and and how effective it is for for students that are in the classroom compared to classes that do not have learning assistance in them. All right, so some some background on the learning assistant program. Uh, in 2003 at UC Boulder, that's where it uh, originally started. And learning assistants are, are simply undergrads who have taken, the, taken that course. And it says STEM course here, but it really could be a non-STEM course as well. There are learning assistants for, for non-STEM courses. And they remember what it's like to learn the material. So they're, they're fluent in the um, topics covered. Uh, and they're and they're capable of of <clears throat> of teaching that material effectively to the students. Um, the the most significant difference between them and let's say a teaching assistant is the structure of the classroom. So we see here in our graphic we have a, a more traditional model here uh, where we have an instructor lecturing the students, pretty typical. But with the learning assistant model, what we have instead is the instructor um, interacting with both the learning assistants and with groups of students. And so you'll see that these groups of students, they're small groups, they're interacting with each other, they're interacting with the LA, the LA is interacting with the instructor, the instructor is interacting with the students, so there's, there's a lot going on um, that is more conducive to a very um, <clears throat> high dialogue, um, incredibly constructive uh, classroom setting. Um, and that, that's, that's really the difference between learning assistant courses and non-learning learning assistant courses. Um, and the, the role of the learning assistant is to support student learning. So it, it goes further than simply grading. You know, they're, they're not there to, to make the instructor's life easier per se, right? They're there for the, for the students to help them to be able to solve challenging problems uh, at a higher level. So that that is the role of the learning assistant. And so what can we say about their effectiveness? Well, there's been a number of studies done on uh, learning assistant effectiveness. And uh, what we have here is um, a study done on physics courses and they observed significant um, improvement on grades for pre-post tests. Um, they, <clears throat> they found that uh, minority students benefit significantly more than majority students do. They both, they both benefit um, at a, st a statistically significant level. Uh, but it was it was interesting to see just how much the, the minority students um, benefited, and they measured that using Cohen's d. And if you're not familiar with Cohen's d, that's a um, that's a statistic uh, that is based on the means of two groups, where the two groups have a similar standard deviation. You can um, measure uh, how much the mean score has changed. Um, by units of standard deviation. And so uh, it's a way to get a better sense relative um, to the standard deviation of, of how um, their means have improved. So in this case, um, <clears throat> you see the mean has gone up 1.08 standard deviations and the other one went up only 0.77 standard deviations. Uh, and, and that is a significant difference between the two. And in the other course, similar thing happened, but they, they had some other really interesting findings after observing and analyzing chemistry, physics, biology, and, and genetics classes. And they noticed that there's a specific time period that um, students should be interacting with LAs if they want to see the biggest um, jump in their, in their scores. Uh, it, and, and that, that number was 16 to 30 minutes per week interacting with the learning assistants. Um, if you didn't spend time interacting in the course, in the classroom, then 
you you weren't gonna um see <laughs> much of much effect uh in fact the Cohen's d statistic for that is 0.873 for when you spent between 16 and 30 minutes a week interacting and uh, against only about 0.369 uh, of a Cohen's D without interaction. So that's that's significant. And uh, they also noted that males uh, have higher effect sizes than females, um, something that they're looking to... Um, try to mitigate that difference, uh, what we would want to see is uh, at least them to be closer. So that's that's not great news, uh, but it's it's good to know. And then black students had higher ed- average effect sizes than white, white students. So that kind of is a call back to um, the previous paper talking about how minority students benefited more than majority students. So that's that's an example of that there. So, and there's other research that show similar results. Uh, The bottom line is that if you um, have a learning assistant, you're going to see better results. So we're hoping to see that here at FGCU. So we we don't have the same um, data collection tools and techniques that these universities who have been doing it for a while in a highly organized fashion. um, We don't don't have those, those same techniques and tools uh, we're going to start implementing them. One of them um, is a web-based um, testing application called LASSO, which stands for Learning Assistant Supported Student Outcomes, and, and they get a lot of their data from there. All we had to work with was uh, DFW rates and among some other metrics, but DFW rates was, was the um, most straightforward approach and a good starting place for us. So some of the questions we want to answer are, do DFW rates among all subject areas improve when an LA is present? So DFW rates, if, if you're not familiar, are if you get a D, F, or withdraw from the course, it goes into a bucket called DFW. And um, it basically is the complement of passing the class, right? It's, it's everyone who did not pass the class. So we want to know, do, do these rates drop when an LA is present compared to when they're not? Um, second question do the DFW rates among classes with the same instructor improve as an LA compared to when they're not? So what we're doing here is is holding the instructor constant and looking at their courses. Um, the course is the same. If they teach two of the same courses, one has a learning assistant and one doesn't, how do those DFW rates compare? So we're doing that across multiple instructors. Okay, so here, here are our results for our First question, do the DFW rates among all subject areas improve when an LA is present compared to when they're not? Uh, Before we can apply any tests to um, measure this, what we need to check is the shape of our data because ideally we would like to use a parametric test like a t-test, which most of us are familiar with if you've taken intro stats. Uh, But we can't assume that our, our assumptions are met, which is that our data is normally distributed. Um, So we need to check that and we can do that using a different test called the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. Um, And what this test does is we put in the data that we're concerned with. Um, In this case, uh, what we're looking at is differences between um, courses. So we have to take the DFW rate of the um, course, uh, all the courses that don't have, the average of all the courses that don't have a learning assistant, and subtract the average of all the courses that do have a learning assistant, um, or the other way around, depends on how you set it up. And what we're wanting to see is if, is if uh, all of those points across all the courses after doing that subtraction, <clears throat> if the result is normally distributed. And so we get a test value of 0.974 and a p-value of 0.8655. And what this means is that we do have normal data. So whenever our p-value fails to reject our null hypothesis, which is that um, the data (coughs) is uh, normally distributed, so we assume normality, um, then we can say that our data is normal. So 
the data is normal since we failed to reject. And now we may use a parametric test, specifically a left-tailed test to sample and paired. So we're pairing on courses um, <clears throat> and we're doing left-tailed since we're doing uh, LA DFW rate minus non-LA DFW rate. Um, and what we would want to see is uh, that we can uh, observe significant differences that um, the difference is less than zero, right? Because we would want to see that the LA DFW rate is less than the non-LA DFW rate. So when you subtract the two, it should give you a value less than zero, but we don't get that. <clears throat> In fact, it ends up being quite the opposite. We get a p-value of 0 0.8092, and um, that pretty much means that it turns out the DFW rate for non-LA courses is actually lower. Go figure, right? Um, and this is the uh, density plots of the two data sets. So the red curve indicates uh, uh, the distribution of DFW rates for courses with LAs, and the black one indicates the um, distribution for courses without um, LAs. And we can see that there are not significant differences. If, if there were, if we were going to reject, then we would want this red curve to be significantly leftward of this black curve, but it is not. Um, and that's a shame. But we, we think that there might be reasons for that, which we'll be talking about later. So that was the result of our first test. Second test. Do DFW rates among courses with the same instructor improve when an LA is present compared to when they're not? Um, well, same thing we need to do here is, is uh, check the normality of our distribution. And uh, we'll use the Shapiro-Wilk normality test for that. And in this case, we can conclude with certainty that it is not normal. We got a p-value that was really close to zero. Um, and this indicates that we cannot <clears throat> um, assume that our data is approximately normal. So we have to use non-parametric tests. Uh, in this case, we use the Wilcoxon signed rank test. So it's the non-parametric equivalent, or analog, I should say, to the... Um, paired two sample t test um, and we do this on dfw rates among courses with the same instructor depending on if there's an la or not so we got a um, st statistic of 36 p value of 0.6225 and again similar result cannot conclude that there is not only just a significant difference but really what we want to know is is the dfw rate for LA courses lower, and it is not. So uh, here's our distribution for that as well, and the two are eerily similar. Um, we see it's bimodal a little bit, um, similar shape and distribution, so no dice there as well. All right, so what, what can we say about this? Well, <clears throat> we, there might be more effective metrics that we could try to use to um, figure out whether uh, there actually are differences or not. Maybe DFW rates wasn't the place to look. Uh, we could be looking at total grades. Maybe we should look at whether passing students with LAs pass at a higher level, right? Are there more As? Um, so that's something to consider. Maybe, maybe it's just the wrong metric. Um, and then what if it is the right metric? Maybe, maybe we should have seen significant results and we didn't because of a lack of funding and support from the university. That's that's certainly a big issue. Multiple instructors have expressed that frustration. So that's something to consider. These these other universities with with really successful programs are are getting great support and funding. So I don't, it's hard to say why um, ours isn't considering the results of of their research. Um, next. Next thing that we can think about uh, that might have affected our curves is the fact that um, courses that had a learning assistant only had one, and they never had an instructional instructional assistant. Okay, but on the other hand, courses that did not have a learning assistant may have had an instructional assistant. So why why is that significant? Well, we're looking at the uh, density curves for the DFW rates of of these courses, 
if these courses without a learning assistant have an instructional assistant who might have been trained as a learning assistant themselves but aren't having that role in that setting, if they're using some of the techniques that they've been taught as a learning assistant, then that could be um, pulling their DFW rates down and that would cause a leftward shift of their density curve. And so when we go to use uh, the uh, tests to see the differences, it's going to look like there's no differences uh, when maybe in reality there actually is, had there not been an, an instructional kit assistant in some of those non-LA courses. So that's, that's something we need to account for in future data. We need to be able to know whether or not a course had instructional assistant or not. Um, <clears throat> and uh, more recent semesters, classes with learning assistants may have had more than one, and that's important because uh, some other uh, results from research indicates that uh, when you have a certain number, a uh, certain ratio of learning assistants to um, students that it has a serious impact on, on grades in a, in a positive way. Uh, but if you have too much, then, then it's not positive. So um, that's something we should have kept account of. And uh, the last one is the fact that instructors self-select to use learning assistance. Um, maybe that's not great. Maybe we need to implement more standardization, more training for both the instructors and the students so that when they're being used, they're being used appropriately and not just, you know, as a learning assistant. Uh, I'm sorry, as an instructional assistant. Because if they're being used as, a, as an instructional assistant, that, that defeats the point because the whole, the whole purpose is to restructure the, the classroom to have those small groups of interacting students. Uh, and so <clears throat> without that, then you have, you have serious issues. So uh, we would like to see uh, better training and more standardization in, um, in, the, in the program. So what can, we, what can we do for the future to get maybe more impactful results or, or see improvements? Well, what we should do is make use of that lasso collection tool that I mentioned earlier. Um, doing that gives us really good data that we can do more with and dig a little deeper. The second is to implement pre-post tests so that um, we can really see how students are improving as a result of these courses. Um, that would be really effective. And I think that is um, being done in the coming semesters for many courses, but we'd like to see it across the board. Uh, and then some of our analysis, we'd like to, uh, and this, this comes as a result of the better data, we want to implement predictive modeling techniques such as regression analysis. Uh, instead of using just inferential statistics like t-test or non-parametric tests, hypothesis testing, um, we want to be able to uh, have a little bit um, more analysis that is predictive in nature. Uh, we also want to look at differences between ethnicity or sex. Um, there should have been a comma there. And uh, we want to get a better feel for exactly who benefits the most so that we can focus our efforts. And uh, we did get some courses that had consistently good results. Um, COP 1500, which is Intro to Computer Science, and then COP 2006, which is Intro to Computer Programming. Um, they, they've been, those courses have been doing a really nice job for a number of years of using learning assistance in the appropriate way. Uh, so we, we want to take a better look at that data. Um, references used uh, on just this um, presentation are here. A number more were used um, <clears throat> in the paper. Just didn't have enough room or time to fit all of them in. So, uh, But there, there are a lot that you could look at if you want to learn more. And uh, that's it. Thank you.